So we've uh, demonstrated how to export a color map by itself. We've just showed how to export a normal map by itself and reapplying it to the original object we made, we modeled and uh, UV unwrapped within LightWave. So what if we want to export out a displacement map? Well, remember I did this in per pixel painting mode, but uh, we can still export out a displacement map. Now normally for displacement mapping, uh, I mean, well, you in both modes, per pixel painting and micro vertex painting, you you can export out a displacement node. What this will do, or displacement node, a displacement map. Now, basically, what it will do, it will take the literally the normal map information and convert it to a displacement map node. Whereas the other uh, when we demonstrated the micro vertex painting uh, style sculpting, it's actually sending out a displacement map based off of real vertexes being moved. So when I did the example with the elephant with the little bumps on his back, it was actually create, generating a displacement map based off of true displacement. What it will do in this case here, because we're in micro vertex painting mode, um, notice that our sphere is still perfectly round if you look at it on the edges. Remember, these are normal maps that are creating fake displacement. So what we want to do is we want to convert this fake displacement into uh, real displacement inside of LightWave. So basically the, the function is exactly the same. We just go to Textures and we go on to export and let's go down we have a couple different options that we can go with a displacement map current layer we're only using one we've only been painting on one layer so we can you can use that you have displacement map of visible layers which would include anything that's visible which that would probably work as well so why don't we just go with export uh, current layer okay so let's click displace uh, zero level is gray. Let's click OK. And we'll, uh, we'll go with a PNG for now. Remember, there's different ways you can save this out. You could use a Targa. You could use all different ones. But let's go ball. And we'll call this this. Placement map. Okay. Let's save. Fill in parts of texture. Sure, why not? Fill in empty parts of texture. Depth factor for save texture. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Wonderful. So let's uh, head on over to layout. And so Remember, in order to apply the displacement map, we have to go under the Objects Properties panel, not under the Surface panel. Surface panel is, you know, for color, will be color and bump map information, like we just did, uh, but we need to go under Object Properties. So we go under the Deform tab, and we're going to click Edit Nodes. Now, when we did the... Uh, when we sh when I demonstrated how to export out displacement in one of the last videos, what I did is I saved out a uh, the node setup for uh, displacement mapping inside a LightWave. Um, so let's go import nodes, and I saved it under objects displacement nodes, and it says can't find the elephant. So remember we had we'd set this up for the elephant. So I don't want to really have to set that up again, that whole setup, so I just saved saved it out so that we can use it down the road. Select an alternate file. Um, we could just say no for, for the time being. And so so what it's done is it's loaded up the node. So what we have to do, the, the, the one, two, three, four, five little nodes that we had set up, and we had put all the parameters in, like 0.5, and 0.1, 
And this is a good place to start because now we don't have to do anything other than plug this node uh, into the displacement, the output. And now we just have to double click on the image node and just find our displacement file. So it looks ball displacement. So if we, let's uh, enlarge that. So you can see the white lines here. So this is, so you can see over here, this is the normal map. And you can see how the normal maps, the bumps are carved in. Well, see the same concept is going on over here. Um, if you look on the corners and stuff, you can match up. All it's done is converted this into a, some sort of form of grayscale to use for uh, displacement mapping. So the white areas on this displacement map are the raised areas. And the darker areas are when we carved into the surface. So we're going to select this displacement map, click open, and it says mapping UV map type. We need to go, okay, so sorry, mapping, we want to select UV mapping, UV, and select the actual UV map. Let's go un unwrap because that was the name of the UV. And let's close this down. Everything should be ready to go. So notice that there's nothing affecting it. Let's just go back into OpenGL for the moment, kids. And let's make sure that we're right beside edit nodes, the check mark is turned on. Notice that something jumped. You can see the, the surface moved a little bit. So that means we have to um, we have to do something here. Let's um, we sorry we uh, we need to change the subpatch level. Let's try 20 like we did in the elephant video. So, whoops. So you see that? At 20, it sort of bulged out. If we go back to 1, see how the bulge sort of disappeared. So let's go 20. Okay, so we can see the displacement coming out. And... Um, And I just want to make sure the surface editor is still, okay, that's still on. And let's go to, sorry, let's go back into under the deform tab. So we wanted to subdivide this so we can actually have true displacement. Click under edit nodes. And multiply and see I just jacked it up to 0.37 <laughs> let's put it up to 4 if we go 0.8 okay I'm going to close this uh, down here, and I'm going to move my camera. Okay, so see how we can actually physically, uh, <clears throat> physically adjust the geometry. So that's pretty cool. Um, so under the multiply tab, let's put it back to point one. Close that down. So there's a little bit of bumpiness here. Now, if we go into VPR mode, what it's doing now is it's combining the displacement mode node plus the normal map normal map uh, that we created in uh, 3D Code. So you've got two levels of display, two types of displacement. We have true true displacement. Let's jack this up a little bit because you can't, it's harder to see. Let's go point 0.3. So we have true displacement on this ball. If we go to objects and we just rotate. You, 
you can see on the edges that it's actually physically um, bumping out. Let's, let's go 0.5. So we have geometry that's actually physically uh, protruding out of the object now. Now this is all image based. The 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 geometry that's actually physically sticking out that you can see when you're looking at the very very edge of the object this this is being driven by the displacement map the what you're looking at on the inside of the actual ball is a combination of the displacement map which is true displacement which is pushing out the geometry combined with a normal map which is normal map is like a bump map it adds that little extra level of uh sorry a bump map is uh like a normal map or sorry a normal map is like a bump map it it sort of accents uh a little bit of detail but a normal map is fake but we're combining fake with real with a real displacement now and as I mentioned, and it starts to get kind of complicated or, or kind of strange because we didn't actually do true displacement, but you can convert fake, the normal maps, which are fake, and convert them into maps that will physically generate actual displacement. So I hope that's not too, <laughs> too egg-headed for you. Now, in this case here, what I can do now um, to add a little bit of uh, more texture to this, if I want to make this have a little bit more uh, oomph to it, we also we have a color map that we could use as a as a bump map because we have a little bit of discoloration in our color map. So what will happen is if we use this, let's go to surface editor. If I uh, let's click on texture, let's go. Uh, copy all layers we'll go down to the bump channel we can actually use this color map even though it's color in the bump channel because the bump channel uh, only uses the grayscale values and so basically light and dark it doesn't use the color information let's go oh sorry let's just go paste replace okay It'll just use the grayscale information to to achieve uh, a bump on the actual physical surface. So let's see if we can actually get it to spice this up a little bit. Let's go 300. Ah, there we go. Okay, so we got a little bit more. Uh, let's try 500. Okay, so if we go in with the camera, T for move, remember we're in VPR mode. And if we were in texture shaded mode, see, notice you can't see the, uh, sorry, you can't see the, the bump map. And, and we're not looking at the normal map here either. Um, we're just looking at the displacement and the color map in this mode. But if we go, once again, go back to VPR, we can actually see the little bumpies. And remember, you can jack up uh, bump channels like really, really high. Okay. And once again, you could do a... F9, and you can do all sorts of, uh, once again, neat and uh, interesting things beyond beyond what you've done uh, here inside of 3D Coat. The, uh, the image maps are literally, once you get them out into other pieces of software, they're they're literally just a, a, a methodology so that you can build from them. And so don't feel that, okay, well, it looks like this in 3D code. This is as good as it's going to get. Well, you can once again bring it into your host 3D application and just start 
tweaking this and, and playing around with this. You could say, for instance, maybe load the, uh, color channel into the specularity channel. And we'll just, uh, paste that in. We'll use the color channel once again for that. And I just pasted all the parameters in, like the, uh, it's already set to the proper image and the proper UV map. And so basically it's feeding, it's feeding off of the color map to decide where the specularity is going to be physically on the object. So notice it all of a sudden got nice and shiny out of nowhere. So anyways, I think that's, uh, I think that's kind of neat. And sorry, once again, you can come back and where are we? The specular channel. Um, you can change the intensity, intensity of that. You could go to say, uh, layer opacity and you could make it a little bit shiny. See, we're at 28.5%. 200%, see it's nice and super, super shiny. 500%, it's getting a little gooier. 50%, you know. So, anyways, like I said, at the end of the day, uh, this isn't the end. This is not the end of what your surface is going to look like um, when you're done. You still have options uh, to, to do things once you get these, these maps out of here. We didn't, uh, we didn't create a bump channel inside of, uh, inside of 3D code. We only made a, we made a color, we made a normal, and, uh, we made a displacement map. And once again, you can, you can pipe these, uh, you can pipe and use uh, some of these images, like like I said, the color. It's just an example, the color channel. This is just a, a very brief example. You can reuse different images that you've pumped out to generate new effects by feeding those image maps and adjusting the settings uh, for the individual channels. Uh, you even have uh, where we got uh, a good one would might be reflection. You might want certain areas driven, the reflection driven by one of the, you know, by the, the color map or the grayscale aspect of the color map. You could take, uh, you could take the color map that we generated and bring it into Photoshop and adjust the contrast settings. You know, maybe you want it, uh, certain areas to have more pop so you could change the contrast levels uh inside of like i said in, inside of a program like photoshop or or any other uh, photo editing program and get a different and re-pipe that back in again to a specific channel and get a different result once again so literally it's uh limitless so anyways i hope you guys have uh learned lots today and uh, like I said, the goal for the first two volumes was just sort of to try to show you how the interface works, how to get those images in and out of 3D coat, and then how to, uh, you know, easily reapply them and, you know, different possibilities, things that can be done um, once you get them into your, into another uh, 3D application. So anyways, until next time, this is uh, Adam Gibson from Learn3DSoftware.com. We'll see you again next time.